Hey guys, I'm here with Jason from Swell Runner, a recognizable face in the Overland industry. How's Another it going? YouTuber. We've been wanting to do a trip for a while out to Moab, and this is that trip. So we're here. This is actually the second night we're together. Well, this is the morning, but this is the second day, day or whatever. Morning. Yeah, so he's been working on his truck like crazy. So this is the first trip since you've got a lot of your electrical stuff kind of done and knocked out. We're gonna be talking about everything. We could be here for like six hours, honestly, talking about all the stuff he's got going on. But we'll just kind of touch on most of it. Some of the stuff Jason's excited about and some of the stuff I'm excited about. We're starting here at the front and yeah, I don't know. I think we'll just get into it. So what do you what, what do you got going on up here? You know, it's been really interesting, uh, this whole project. You know, I kind of got started um, several years ago, not several, like 2016, beginning of 2016, uh, when I bought this. This is my first four-wheel drive vehicle, and I really had no idea what I was getting myself into. Um, I wanted to have something that would enable me to go and camp in remote places. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't necessarily well, like to do like hardcore wheeling, rock crawling kind of things, but I wanted to be able to get to places that were, you know, kind of generally more difficult to get to. Yeah. <clears throat> And so it's been a very evolutionary process, um, you know, and, and so this is a 2016, I bought it in January 2016, uh, Forerunner Trail Edition, they call it the TRD, uh, TRD Off-Road, I think is what they call yeah. it now. Pretty much the same thing, comes with the factory rear lockers and, and just some kind of design treatments and crawl control and stuff like that. So if you're kind of new mm -hmm. to the overlanding, off-roading <laughs> type space, Jason's a great channel to watch because he's kind of very open with these are the lessons learned. How new I am. <laughs> These are the mistakes I made. This yeah. is a noob mistake that I did today. And just very, he doesn't try to hide it and act like he knows everything. Like super open, which is what I really yeah. like about your channel. So you can make mistakes, you can show those mistakes, and then you can learn and help other people learn through those mistakes too. You know, at the end of the day, like, I mean, everything we do in life really is a learning process. Yeah. But, you know, one of the one of the best ways for us to learn is to try something, fail, um, and realize what worked and what didn't work. Like yesterday, you know, we tried one thing and it failed, but then we tried something else with the recovery, and that's another story. But uh, Yeah, but I'm not sure when I'll post this. We'll, we won't talk about what happened too much. Yeah, we'll but tease that out, right? Yeah, but, yeah. Um, something happened. We had to do a recovery. Lessons were learned. It was fun. And it was a good experience overall. Mike, Mike was amazing. So at the front, I've got a, um, I've got a CBI. Uh, front bumper and um, I'm not sure when this video is being published but another uh, rig walk around that Mike did was with <coughs> AJ so it's a very similar bumper as the photo rotor bumper well, it's the same bumper but the yeah, bump design it's right here different. actually you can yep. pan there over so similar bumper with some slight <clears throat> slight differences the primary difference is he's got the he's got a taller uh, center hoop and then he's got hoops that come up over the headlights um, you know there's a variety of reasons you do that you know I, I, I just preferred this look better um, you know, and then of course it's got a, a hole here for a 30 inch light bar, which I've got a light force 30 inch light bar with amber lenses on there. And then I've got a, I think it's a Smitty built winch. It's, uh, it's considered to be kind of a budget winch. It's worked fine for me. I haven't had any issues with it. Okay. Um, and then obviously a flat link on there. I've got full CBI armor treatment. I've got skids, steel skids going all the way back. Got the fuel tank, the transfer case, transmission, front skid. Um, just the whole CBI skid protection treatments, lower control arms, all that stuff. And then some more light force. And so this is something that I've been kind of uh, experimenting with. I, I actually really like the round light look. I, I wasn't sure I was going to like that in the beginning. Um, these lights put out a ton of, uh, a ton of light. Uh, and I really like because you can change these covers out for different colors, for different styles. This is a spot flood combo. Um, they're making an amber spot flood combo, which is what I'll change out to when they get that. Um, and I don't really love the mounting solution. It works, but it does leave the lights vulnerable. Um, if uh -huh. I was to need to push or do anything with the bumper, uh, the lights would have to get sacrificed, and that's that's really not ideal. But yeah, um, but that's where it's at right now. That's not going to be there like that forever. I'm I'm working on that. But so Light Force, yeah, Australian company, kind of getting more into the U.S. market these days though. So they're becoming yep. a more recognizable name in the US, but they've been right. big in Australia for a long time now. From what, yeah, really big in, in Australia from what I understand. Um, they make really good products. I mean, these lights put out a ton of light. They seem to be built really well. The packaging was good. The hardware's really strong. I can torque these things down. They don't move. Uh -huh. um, I, this is totally like, 
a little taboo, but I've got like a subscription, monthly subscription in my car wash, you know, one of those just regular car washes. Yeah. Everybody's like, don't do that. You're gonna, you know. Oh, I got I, one too. I yeah. run this through the car wash with the lights up here and everything and they stay in place. And so, you know, you know, that's not pushing on a lot, but it's like when your stuff stays in place, when you go through a car wash, it's mounted well. So that, yeah. that's cool. Cool, let's, uh, while we're up here, I think the hood looks already popped so we can kind of, you can show what you got going under here. So this has been like a pretty big, like three month project for me that I've been working on. Uh -huh. um, so this all started because I had a, I had a group 31 in here, it was just a Duracell. Uh, I probably wasn't, I probably wasn't taking very good care of it because group 31's AGM batteries really need to be topped off okay. every now and then. Um, and I never did that with that one. The, I also had an ARB fridge in the back, uh, either the battery or the fridge, something was going wrong because that battery was dying a lot. Um, and it, if I turn the fridge on, the battery would be dead within an hour. Um, so that's a problem when you're on the trail. If you have to worry about your deep cycle battery dying, your start battery, right? So it's all about redundancy. Most of the time I'm on the trail with somebody, a lot of times I'm not. Uh, a lot of times I'm remote with my, with my kids and family and, and you have to have redundancy built in. Uh, so anyway, so I, I've got a, a new Group 31 Odyssey battery in here. And I think this is a better quality battery, but the biggest thing here is I set up multiple layers of redundancy to make sure that if I am remote, uh, that I'm gonna be okay. Uh, and I don't have to worry about really compromising my, what's called a start battery. I installed a second battery. It's a, you know, basically call it the aux battery, the house battery, and using the dual battery kit from SDHQ. Um, and basically uh, they provide the hardware, the mount for the battery back there. And they, um, and the biggest thing is they provided all the wiring and the instructions for how to do it all. Okay. Um, you know, you can piece something like this together for, you know, really not a whole lot, but you know, if you've ever built any wires, like these big heavy grade type wires, like it's pretty tough. Like it's kind of hard to do that. You can be done, but it's it's kind of a pain in the butt. Yeah, and electrical. So, yeah, so the value there is, is really in, in getting the instructions, getting the labeled cables, getting the, the hardware, getting all of the, you just, and the cables are cut to fit. And so basically the way it works is I've got a primary cable here, and this is your positive, I got a negative here, and this basically runs over across the back of the firewall here into what's called an automatic charging relay uh, from Blue C, ACR. What that automatic charging relay does is that if it detects voltage, current uh, flowing to it, uh, which basically, and, and if I'm botching this explanation, please forgive me because I'm not an electrical engineer, but basically if the voltage current is, is being, is, is coming to that that's, that's higher than what's in the battery, it basically opens up the connection between the two batteries and allows that battery to be charged along with this battery by the alternator. Okay. Um, and concurrent with that, if I have, and we'll show you in the back, if I have current coming in from like a trickle charger or a battery tender, um, it's the same thing. It's gonna see the voltage is coming up. It's gonna open that ACR and allow the current to flow evenly between the two batteries. That way both will be charged. If, uh, and I've got all my electrical in the back, ran to the uh, auxiliary battery. If current is coming down, or if it's below a certain threshold, I, believe, I think it's coming, if it's being drawn out without it coming in, I, I don't know, uh, the ACR, uh, isolates the two. So basically that enables me to power a fridge or any kind of electrical in the back without drawing power from my start battery. So the fridge won't kill the start battery. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. So, so isolates them. Yep. So you're going to be good. You're when you try to start your car, it's yep. going to start every yep. time. I run lights off this battery. Um, just because I will never run them almost never. I mean, I almost never run them when the vehicle's off and this battery is big enough. I could run lights off of it for probably a day or two and not be a, uh, and it not be a problem, but everything else runs off the aux battery. Cool. And then got the S pod up here. I do. I have an S pod. Uh, this is, um, this is, this is, so I've got the touchscreen one, but the, the, the Bantam I think is a smaller footprint here, but this is where I run. <coughs> Really, the only thing I use the S-Pod for is the lights. Um, so I run all of my lights into this. I've got a light bar on the roof rack, front light bar, spots. I've got lights on the top of the rack in the back and in the bumper in the back, and it all comes through here. Power tray? Uh, yep, I've got everything bolted down to a power tray, and then this thing right here, we'll talk a little bit about this when we move to the back of the vehicle, but all the power that runs off the aux battery, I have main wire, this, this four gauge cable, it comes from the aux battery, goes into here, 
maybe it's here, but then it goes from here to the back of the vehicle. And the reason why I have this is because I have four gauge primary power coming from the aux battery to the back of the vehicle. And if I think I'm gonna have an issue or if I'm trying to troubleshoot, I can, I can click this right here, completely breaks the connection, it's a breaker. Um, and I can I can completely break the connection to power in the back and completely you know isolate everything. So it's just I wanted to have that in place, um, obviously to prevent anything from drawing too much, but also to be able to shut that connection off very easily and quickly. Nice, cool. So that's a lot going on under the hood, and all that's most of that's pretty new, huh? Yeah, like like new is in. I just finished buttoning up the light project which was the last part of it like last week yeah so this is the first trip since yeah, some yeah. of this new stuff's been in yeah cool let's uh touch on roof rack what you got going on up here yep so uh i have a front runner i think it's slim nine slim line two uh roof rack uh this is not my first roof rack i had an easy on before it uh it worked fine um i, I it was i had like weird little problems with it not big problems when I went and installed the front runner rack, I was like super impressed with how like tough and rigid it was. Like I kind of didn't expect it um, to be so like tough and rigid. It's it's just been a great rack. It came you in have boxes. An install video I for this? do have an install yeah. video. Yeah, so you can I'll check link that to out. it down below, or you could search it. He'll probably show up when you search yeah. it. And I've got a 40 inch uh, light force light bar on the front. I've got a 100 watt goal zero solar panel on the roof. Uh, and I'll talk about that in a second, but that's basically feeding into the system. Uh, and then I have uh, Max Tracks up there. Which and we used a lot yesterday. We did, Ooh. and they're, they probably got about 15 pounds of extra dirt on them right now. Yeah. And then I've got uh, two of these, I don't know if they're the Wolfpack, uh, yeah, or Wolfpack. the Wolfpack, yeah. uh, the Front Runner boxes. And I'll tell you what, for like a 40 or $50 box, like they're, it's a great box. <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't have high expectations for them because they were as cheap as they were. And these two boxes I've had for like three years and two of those years they've been on my dang roof. And you know, and, and they don't have water intrusion. Like I, I take these to the car wash, do uh -huh. rainstorms, and I still don't get water inside. So these are pretty much perma mounted up there. I have them bolted in. Yeah. Cool. And I don't keep anything in that I'm worried about getting wet. Yeah. You know, but it's like- They're but not it's full still waterproof. Kind of like, cool, yeah. yeah. It's just impressive. It, they make a good product for not a whole lot of money. I thought that was pretty cool. Cool. Anything in interior you want to talk about? <laughs> I mean, not not a whole lot. I know your kids hanging out in here, but yeah, I just I have the S Pod touch screen mounted here. <laughs> so I have the S Pod touch screen mounted in here. I don't love the location. Uh, I have issues with a hot air blowing on it. it yeah. Screen doesn't like that, so that that may not be there forever. But that's. That's what. That's pretty much all I have on the interior. I don't have. I got a camera mount on the dash, but I don't. You know, you know the Forerunner. The way it comes is pretty comfy. It's pretty. I like. I like the way it is. Really. So. Cool. Uh, oh, we didn't touch on suspension, wheels, and tires. So what? What? What do you got going on for suspension, wheels, tires? So I am running. Um, it's. I think it's about a 32 inch. It's a 285 70 70 uh, 17. Uh, BFG KO2 all terrain. Yeah, like a 32.8, I think. Yeah, maybe it's almost 33 or something. I can't remember. But um, and I'm running on Icon, Icon alloys. Uh, you know, when I got into this, I was just really trying to find what I thought would be the best tire, and it seemed like everybody. It seemed like the consensus was that the KO2s was a pretty were a pretty good, reliable all around tire. Yep. Um, they're fairly expensive in the in the tire realm, but. You know, I've had, I think I've bought four or five sets now over the years, and I have, I've been really happy with them. Like, I haven't had a compelling reason to say, yep, yeah, I'm getting rid of that and I'm gonna try something different. Yeah, I've They've had worked. pretty good luck with them as well. Um, the Icon alloys are 17 by, uh, I actually don't know how wide they 17 are. 17 by eight, uh, they're probably, maybe eight, eight and I and a half think. or something. Um, but they're fine, they're good wheels. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I, I like them. I mean, I, I didn't, I'm not like a big wheel guy, so I can't yeah. sit here and tell you like all the great things about the wheels, but I'm running uh, an Icon Vehicle Dynamics Stage 7 sus uh, suspension setup. It has uh, the CDC valve, so I can adjust uh, the ride quality. Do you adjust it much? Never. Never, um, okay. Well, well, so, but here's here's the reason why I still like it, though. Uh, the fact, the, just the, if I, if the, I think, it, I don't know if it's a stage six, but whatever the, the exact same suspension setup that I have that, that comes that, that doesn't have the adjustability, the ride quality is, is, is quite a bit harder. 
than the softest setting on here. And I have this on the softest setting. And I'll tell you the reason why I did it like this, exactly like this, was because I bought my wife's Land Cruiser and it was like, it was such a comfortable ride. Uh -huh on the highway and and it just it felt good you know i mean an suv like so i had an ome three inch just basic setup you uh -huh. know for, for the first like couple of years that i was doing this and you know it accomplished the goal uh it uh, allowed it allowed flexibility and it and it gave me a lift that i wanted mm -hmm. but the ride was really harsh yeah. like it was a very stiff ride and it didn't bother me for a long time because it was coming out of sports cars and the ride is stiffer on sports cars uh -huh. but then that was like i was saying when i was riding in my wife's land cruiser i was like, like this is nice this i could have a softer ride yeah so that's why i went this route i really like i have ridden in uh, factory foreigners i've ridden in a lot of other uh, vehicles that have had modified ex suspensions and other things and i get back in the forerunner and it, it's a really good ride yeah cool so happy with that that's a that's a relatively newer modification you've done too right yeah that that happened in um september october okay. it hasn't been long i've been real happy with it. it's not been very long cool so we're in the back here i don't know where to start so we have a cbi dual swing out also with you got rotopax high lift and i'll let you talk about it how about that yeah so you know just like the same the the rear armor is uh is going to be a cbi dual swing out bumper I wanted to do the dual um, because I do trailer. Um, that's the single wouldn't work. Um, it's just too big. Because mm -hmm. he wouldn't be able to swing it out with right. all this junk yep. over here. The dual works really well with the trailer. Uh, it, it actually, you know, we live out of the back of the vehicle at camp, basically, because uh, we're kind of like living this way, and this this workflow works for us. Um, so yeah, we've got recovery points here. Obviously, the bumper is a great option. You've got the swing out. It's got armor on the sides. Uh, bar work on the sides um, and then the back I have uh, an ARB um, drawer setup so this is like a regular drawer and then this is what's called I think it's called a roller floor and so I can pull it in and out for the fridge and then I have storage in um, in uh, in both places as well uh, so that's kind of nice um, I don't know the drawer system has worked for me I, I think that there's a more optimized way to do things and I've been kind of thinking through that so there may be something else coming out coming up for that in the future but um but but really the kind of the the meat and potatoes in the back is is all the electrical work that i've done back here so before i had a fridge i had power coming back for the fridge but if i ever wanted to do anything else back here and for example like install some more plugs or maybe i have some future need that comes up i'm having to mess with running power more power back and because you have to have some connection to the battery up front so what i wanted to do is i wanted to run primary power from the main battery so you, i mentioned a minute ago having that four gauge cable coming back off of that like breaker thing so basically i ran into a 12 circuit fuse block <laughs> so basically, I ran I ran that four gauge power into a twelve circuit um, blue C uh, fuse block thing over here, and you should see it in a second. But but basically, that enabled me to be able to have a fusible um, a fusible electrical connection. So I can take that, and I can now, uh, if I want to, whatever I want to do, I can run it right into there, and I can put a fuse in there. Um, so if I want to limit whatever power draw it's going to have, I mean, I, it's just it's very flexible. That's the point. I have a lot of flexibility. So I ran I ran power, you saw that voltmeter. I've got a 12 volt USB plug over there. I've got a Genius NoCo plug that I kind of uh, just kind of screwed into the side panel there and I've got that running in so I can plug the trickle charger into that. And then I ran that same 12 volt plug, power, blue C power thing over here so I can plug in the fridge and I've got USB over here. So the cool thing now is that I've got a lot of flexibility in terms of powering devices and you know just stuff back here and it's the best part is it's it's expandable it's it, i can expand it yeah and i'm guessing have you already or are you going to put a video up talking about like all of the electrical work you've yes. done is yeah. that out or it's going to be out you guys are watching this just keep an eye on the channel you'll see it. it i've got so that's one of the things that i like to do is i i detail everything that's going on that i'm doing with the forerunner because like for me like like this whole electrical project has been I don't want to say a mini nightmare because it's not like it was a bad experience. It was just, there was a lot of stuff I didn't know anything about. Electrical stuff, man. Yeah, so it's, it was a big learning experience, but it was fun. But I share, the point is I share all that with you guys and it's and it's just really fun. The only other thing that, that I've got going on back here is I've got a, a Yeti set up. Uh, so I've got a Yeti Goal Zero, I'm sorry, Goal Zero Yeti 1400. And you know, this is just an added layer of redundancy. If I'm going to be on the trail for a couple of days uh, and I feel like 
uh, maybe, or maybe I'm gonna be parked for a couple of days, you know, base camp, and uh, it's a backup power supply for the fridge. Um, and then I, I will charge all of my devices directly from that thing instead of uh, pulling from the house battery, uh, like my camera, uh, uh, camera batteries and stuff like that. If I'm gonna be like today, we're gonna drop trailer and we're gonna go have some fun on some trails and I will use that to charge my, my camera batteries. Stuff while you're on the go, yeah. Yep, and so the best part about that though, the thing that I love about that is I can, I can unstrap that thing and I can pull the thing out and I can put it on a table if I need to catch up on some work and power my laptop and there's a built-in inverter so I can plug in AC power, I think it's AC. I've got direct 12 volt power for my USB-C. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could power everything that I need to power laptop, iPads, <laughs> right from that thing and it's, it's just a lot of power. It's Super convenient, really nice. yeah. I love those things. I don't have a dual battery setup so I am primarily yeah, lugging one of those things around, and they're just they're super convenient. Yep. Yeah, yep. and you have both best of both worlds, I guess. Yeah. And then what? You have these little Molly type panels in your back back windows here. What are those? I or do. do you know? Yeah, I believe so. There's a couple of different companies that make them. Uh, these are made from, I believe, a company called Orange Orange Box Fabrication. So I bought these years ago and put them in. And you know, I have a love-hate relationship, but I'll tell you the, the thing that's really great about them is these back windows are completely pointless. Like you can't do anything with them and they're out of the way. You, I mean, they're just basically exterior vehicle aesthetics. And I, I mean, I, it's fine that they're there, right? But it's like, that's the point is, is that's usable space that you put these panels over it and it's like, you don't lose any functionality in the vehicle whatsoever. You gain, it's a hundred percent gain. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can strap stuff to it and bolt stuff to it. And yeah, you got little bags, stuff. little mounts and stuff in the bags. It's just extra storage. I actually, it's not as optimized as it could be, but yeah. it's, it's, it's really handy to have. So yeah. Cool. I think that's it back here. We're going to touch really briefly on the trailer. If you want more info on the trailer, just check out Jason's channel. Yep. He's very, <laughs> very detailed videos about the trail. You've had yeah. it for, how long have you had it? This is my second Turtleback trailer. Okay. So the first one I got um, beginning of 2017 and I picked this one up in February of 2018. Okay. Yep. Let's uh, kind of walk over here-ish. Oh, we got a bunch of gear set up though. Yeah. So this is it. What's the model name number? Yeah. So this is this is a Turtleback. Uh, they've got they've got a variety of different uh, like models. I think three or four different models. But this is their Expedition trailer. Expedition. Yep. And this is their this is their biggest, baddest, most expensive to be frank. Uh, you know, version. It's 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 tall. It's got a lot of water. Forty two gallon water storage. It's got two Group Thirty One uh, AGM batteries in the front. It's got plenty of power. Uh, I've got uh, you know shore power hookup. I've got solar hookup on the other side. I mean, there's, there's it comes with. I mean, it's got a water heater. I mean, it's decked got, out. Yeah, this I mean, thing it's, is decked it, out. It's probably a lot more than you really. I mean, you get shower nozzles. It's a lot more than you need on a on a trail. But it's a lot of it's really nice to have. Yeah. So, so this is that. It's very well built, as you have seen or will see yeah. in some some upcoming or past videos, depending on when I release this. But it's got. You got all your cooking set up, you got all your storage, you got water tanks, you got awning, you got a massive Denali CVT tent yeah. up top, which is good because you're bringing your kids along with you quite a bit. Sorry. And yeah, we got kind of your power station here, boxes, yep. charging station. And then around back, we got literally the kitchen sink. Yeah, we have everything including the kitchen sink. We've got a partner, uh, 10,000 BTU stove, medic sink. Um, it's not a toilet. Nope. <laughs> it's a sink back there. And there's a water heater, propane water heater, you know, it's all piped and plumbed so I can have hot water. It's, it's, it's in a lot of stores. It's, it makes, it makes a lot. So I'll tell you one of the things that I love the most about it is that I can <laughs> leave a lot of stuff that, that, that if we're not camping with a trailer that we have to pack and unpack after, before and, a, and after a trip, um, I can leave a lot of that stuff, particularly dry goods, uh -huh. um, just in the trailer. And I don't even have to think about it. Um, the only thing that I'm having to do before a trip is I pack in a bag and if I have any other things that I need to do like refill propane tanks or whatever, otherwise I can hook up the trailer and go. That's what's nice about trailers. People are always telling me to get a trailer and it's just, you don't have to pack up your stuff because yep. you can just leave it there, yep. hook it up and go. But there's comes pros with some and cons. cons. Yep, there's pros and cons. Comes cons. It comes with a lot of convenience, but it's also, it adds another layer of complexity in terms of um, traversing, traction, um, you know, I mean, if you're not comfortable trailering, um, 
yeah. gas mileage. I mean, bullock power. I mean, there's, there's a lot of a cons. Lot. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's, there's cons, but a lot of pros, a lot of cons. Personal so. preference. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, we're not gonna get. We could spend a whole other hour on the trailer. Okay. If you want more info on the trailer, just check out Jason's channel, uh, and we'll have info on it. I think that's it. I think that's gonna wrap it up. It's pretty detailed, but again, like. Jason has a lot of detailed videos, so if you want to dive deeper into any of this stuff, check out his channel. We're gonna do a little bit more here and then hopefully hit some trails. So we'll each be putting out videos of kind of this weekend, so check him out, check me out. Hit that thumbs up button hit if you like button. the video. Yeah. I'll put his Instagram down here somewhere probably, and then I'll just link really. I like to link in the video descriptions to some of this gear his channel, all that stuff. So follow along Appreciate on his, his journey. He's based out of Utah now, kind of a recent move. And yeah, we'll probably you know get together at some point in the future too. Pretty close now, so. Yeah, and then I think he's probably gonna walk around my truck. So that'll be going up or it's up. I never know when I'm going to post these videos, so yeah. it's sometime. Well, yeah. So keep an eye out for that. Really appreciate you guys watching, and uh, you know we'll we'll see you on the flippity dippity. All right. Yeah. Nice exit. Take care.